Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. Someday I will make an actual intro or a script for an intro that I follow. Today is that on that day. Instead, we are playing more historic brawl. Specifically, we're doing Cardum, Patron of Flames, as part of this bit I do where I make historic brawl decks for every potential commander, specifically ones that are in Baldur's Gate. Is Cardum is curious from I know Dominaria came out, but Baldur's Gate had a lot of legendary creatures, and I did not finish making decks for all of them. Anyway, we have Cardum, Patron, Patron of Flames. Um, I will be honest. I made this deck because I logged on today, saw that I had a quest to attack with 30 creatures, saw that I hadn't done a Cardum deck yet, and then said, fuck it, I'm not thinking anyway. This deck is incredibly brainless. This is red deck wins. We have a curve. It technically exists. Um... It's basically one, two, three drops, and then on theory, on turn four, we play Cardum, and then we get more one, two, and three drops. And the entire purpose of this deck is to just punch the other person in the face as fast as possible. If the game does for some reason go long and we haven't lost, there are a few tricks that we still have access to to potentially swing things back in our favor in the form of a couple larger bombs, including, um, actually, honestly, anything over four in this deck is a bomb and some purposes of this deck, so Atsushi to get us some more cards or some flying creature, Rekindling Phoenix because it is a pain in the ass to remove, Cosmos Elixir because I like drawing cards, Urabrask, see Cosmos Elixir, while Pact Bound Duelist, I don't know, he just seemed cool, so I bring him into this deck, Bell House of Horrors to use our graveyard as regeneration and to hopefully retake some form of initiative, Chandra, as a form of putting a clock on our opponent, because this card can't be countered, so at least we get to use the plus one ability once. Inferno of the Star Mount. Again, because it can't be countered. Immortal Sun. See, I like drawing cards. And that's pretty much it. Everything else is very cheap. With that said, the small amount of brain power that I did invest into making this deck actually playable mostly went into making decisions like putting in things such as Urza's Rage over other spells. So we tried to put in things that can't be countered. And also maybe things like Chaos Warp to try to remove stuff that does end up in our path. But otherwise, our plan is to just use Tempo and try to burn the opposing, opposing player down as fast as feasibly possible. So I made this incredible deck full of just the most skill, and now I'm being matched against um, Kinan and Joda, which seems very, very fair. But yeah, this is a pure aggro red deck wins. It requires zero... Yeah, case in point. Kenrith, yes. Thank you. Thank you, matchmaking. This seems very balanced. Um, do I mulligan this? We don't have a two drop. Do I mulligan? I wonder if the mic picks up me. Some popsicles. Why am I? Kind of hard to tell. Doesn't really look like it. Either way, um, this stream I'm doing to avoid finish writing up. I'm kidding. I need to start writing up an article for the blog, except I have zero inspiration to do that. So instead, we're playing Mindless Red Deck Wins. Okay, so this might be another easy victory if my opponent does not, in fact, choose to connect to the game. But yeah, this deck's goal is very simple just blow the other person down as fast as possible. If it gets past turn six, you've probably lost anyway. Um, do I want to keep this? We have a one drop, we have a two drop, we have a three drop. Sure, that's close enough to playable. Let's go. I've also included Sweltering Suns in case you somehow accidentally find yourself in the token mirror matchup. And a few other little just tricks. First day of class... You know, usually we'd expect to have creatures for that to be relevant, but hey, you know, beggars can't be choosers. I wish we had a two-drop creature. That's what most of this deck consists of, is two-drop and one-drop creatures, but we don't. What do you want to do next turn? I might do Grape Shot just to do something. Yeah, I'm going to do Grape Shot. We don't have a creature, so... Um, the critical part about playing this deck is to have absolutely zero chill. If your opponent plays anything, it should die. If your opponent doesn't play anything, it should still die. 
your opponent thinks about playing anything, it should die. If you have to make a decision about should I attack or not attack here, you should be attacking. Because you will not win the long game. So you may as well just go for the throw every instant of life that you easily have the opportunity. I was trying to see if there was a way to bluff there with Clever Conjurer, but I don't think I have access to it. Looking at his mana pool, he still doesn't have the white he needs for Kenrith, but he's got plenty of green, plenty of red, plenty of blue. Wouldn't be surprised if we see the Migration Path or the Cultivate come out this turn, likely to provide some forging acceleration. Clever Conjurer is interesting, actually. I don't think I've seen that in the Kenrith. I'm going to mainline the rest of this popsicle real quick. We may all, it looks like he's eyeing up the Tor Elf's Disciples, so it's also quite possible we just see some hard removal. Get rid of that. Okay, here comes more red, more green. Nope, just a chunky dragon. Do I have any tools to deal with that? Technically, yes. Next to combat. <clears throat> then we're just going to crack out Sweltering Suns and reset the board. Obviously, that's not ideal. We'd prefer to never have to do that, but we don't get much of a choice. Kiora is going to be probably... Interesting call here to pull out Kiora. I will probably counter with... Okay, it's a plus five. Two and three would crack Arnie to a four, which isn't enough to finish it. Minus three will sack the Kraken. Got the blue. I can't let him hit the minus three. So it probably makes the most sense to... Here's what we're trying to do. Crack that. Crack that. Now, if he pulls one more land and gets out Kenrith, it's pretty much game over because he can just heal his way out of this. He does need to pull the blue first. Right now, it looks like he's not hitting his land drops where he would like. So hopefully we can use that to start um, exploring that. We may as well play first day of class here. It doesn't do much for us, and we should just get it out of our hand. Cool. Also, now, no, he doesn't have a counter spell. The timing resolved on that means it's time to start the party. Pull up this lightning bolt. Rocked. Now this turn we can't actually use Arnie to pump, so instead we're just going to run for face. He did play the Kraken Hatchling, so we'll see if he has some form of stabilization here. Arcane Signet, that's very good for him. That gives him the white source, but unfortunately he needs one more mana to actually do it. Hold the lightning bolt for the moment, next to combat. We're gonna wait for him to declare blockers. Then we'll pump Arnie. Looks like he's going to be doing removal. Um, it is when it dies, so get it back in our hand. Activate Arnie's ability now to break through the Kraken Hatchling. Yep. Well, that's interesting. Did that just... That did just do what I think I thought it did. Neat. Clever. Okay. Um, we kind of have to end the turn here, so we hold the lightning bolt. We see Kenrith here. That's a little tricky to figure out what exactly we're... We pull one more land, and it becomes a very easy solution, which is we swing in with Arnie. 
and then we pump him, you get around Kenrith. But if it's just if there's no more fresh land for us, then all of a sudden we have to trade. We'll probably still take the trade anyway because it's better than nothing. Captain Lannery Storm. Okay, this actually just got kind of interesting because I can do this. Now, Storm will become a three, which will turn Arnie into a four, which still makes us a great, which is not great, but. We'll see who he chooses to jump. Let's see who he chooses to he we'll do blockers. We'll sack the treasure. Yep. Okay. If I sack the treasure, I need to figure out how I can get the extra damage here. I think the most logical thing to do is to hold the treasure. Right? Yeah. Damn, man. I'd been better to do that differently. If he has one more land, we're going to be in big trouble next turn. Five, six. One more land lets him play um, Kenrith again, after which we are basically out of options except for hoping that we pull a bomb. Seems unlikely they'll be sitting on a counterspell, but it's still possible. What is that? Who plays cards like this? Don't get me wrong, perfect card, perfect counter by deck. I haven't seen it before. Kind of neat. Um... No point in swinging with Lannery then. We may as well just go in with just. I go in with just card. We have to go in with both, actually. There is a point to swing with Lannery. Neat. This is a pretty. This feels like a pretty perfect anti aggro card. Maybe it's a little over costed at 4 for a 2 5. I guess it probably doesn't get played, because by the time you're playing 4-drop most of the time, when you could play a green 4-drop drop, unless you specifically want to untap something, there's probably better things to untap. Yep. No point in giving up the free mana if we can't even get the kill off. So he's got six life left. We have eight mana. We have answers in the deck. We have Banefire. We have a few other things that will let us chip it down. But again, as always, this is going to come down to can he get Kenrith out before I get an answer? And right now, unless I happen to pull the exact card I need off the top of my deck, the answer is starting to look like yes. Because Kenrith just lets him get an extra 10 HP each turn. Unless he commits to Great Henge instead. Interesting choice. Interesting read. So I think the logic that he's operating under. Dark region planeswalkers. Or. Well. Do I hold this for a turn? You will play Kenrith. You will pump Kenrith to a 6, go to 10 life. And he will then have the mana to play Kenrith again immediately. So the answer is no. Go. Hey, okay. one, two, five. And I just hard remove this off the board. Oh, except he can untap Great Henge. Clever, clever, clever. And that undoes any progress I was making towards the life. Oh well. I wonder if I did that wrong. I don't think I did because even if I bait out the Kenrith play and remove two on the next turn, he gets an extra card off Kenrith. Well, maybe I did. Maybe I did that technically wrong. He can still play Kenrith and then go up five life and then that's pretty much game over at that point. If I don't pull a bomb, like, if I don't pull Inferno, 
then he'll just heal off Kenrith and Great Hedge much faster than I can do anything to try to even touch him. We play it out, but it'll be a very depressing slog. What did you just pay two life for? What? That goes to a 6. He now has the white to go up to a 5. I have... Well, alright. Please don't counterspell my Eye of Venica. Alright, table the Mirror Breaker. I got no choice. He's just got so many tools to work with now. That's the downside, right? Is that our lives, life counter is just... Life is no longer meaningful in this game. Unless I pull Bane Fire, then it becomes a meaningful number. But without that, he can just heal himself all the way up. He can draw cards whenever he wants. Each time he plays a creature, he can probably start resurrecting stuff. I wouldn't be surprised if he actually pulls back. Pack it up on? Nope, Vanish and Verse. Okay, yep, makes sense. Yep, I'll put it in the command zone. How did I gain life this game? I honestly don't remember. No blocks. Tarp creature, planeswalker, tarp creature, planeswalker. That's depressing. We can do that in instance. It's such garbage. Perhaps I shouldn't have thrown away the thundering rebuke, but neither of those two seems like they're going to be really useful to me. Action. I just. This is something that I was thinking about a little bit while I was making this deck and like running test pilots with it. I think mono red is the worst color to like play in historic brawl for most commanders. That's not true for everything, right? There's exceptions to that, but the exceptions to it are goblin-based tribal, right? Anything that isn't Ooh, sorry about that, that probably sounded like shit. I tried the stretch and I accidentally got it. You can tell that I'm a professional. Um, anything that isn't goblin-based tribal in mono red, red just has, like, the least tools. It has the least inbuilt tools to do anything other than to punch face. Yep, I will pay a life and draw more cards. still lose, but I'd rather lose trying to do something funky looking than I would just play it out and be boring. I 
I guess I could have tried to stall one more turn, but I would have had to sack something to do that. There's no guarantee that I would actually get anything out of it. But yeah, Red has the least inbuilt tools for doing funky stuff, right? Now, there are exceptions to that. Tybalt's Trickery, Chaos Warp, right? But Black has hard removal in the form of Destroy functions. Um, white has a lot of Exile and also Destroy. Green has big creatures and mana ramp effects. Blue has just general control. Red doesn't really have much, except, hey, we can put haste on a bunch of our creatures. Now, I'm not saying that's true against about magic as a whole. I'm saying that specifically in the context of Historic Brawl, trying to build mono-red commanders that don't have a built-in gimmick or aren't sort of functional as a commander or aren't a tribal commander kind of blows. We have no two drops, and we are not on the play. Let's see. What do we want to do? I like to just keep... We're out on the play. We're playing into a life gain deck. I'm gonna keep this because the Urza's Rage and the Shock I think are going to be useful slash necessary. Though if I don't draw another land by turn three, this game is probably pretty bad. Um, Relic Robber would be nice, but Curse of Yohongo could actually be cast from the graveyard, so I'm tossing that. for the 3-2, buddy. Please give me another land game. I don't ask for much. Except for Mythics in every pack, but mostly another land. It's not another land. Maybe we'll be lucky. Maybe this is tribal vampires, and that's why they're playing elves that make you discard cards in it, and not black life gain control. You know? Um... This is gonna look stupid, because it kind of is. It's instant speed? It is, so I can wait to do it to his turn. I'm probably gonna use this and discard something to try to draw more cards. I might give up shock, we'll see. I really don't want to give up Chandra, because Chandra feels like the bomb that lets me win this game. If I can actually pull it out. Meanwhile, Shock is nice, but it doesn't look like this is a... It doesn't look like this is aggro black. And I have first strike. You're not a land. That's what it's about. Alright. Um I'm gonna bring out Cranko this turn. I'm gonna keep hitting. Okay, so these aren't snow, so it's probably not running blood on the snow. Or like me, just it is running blood on the snow, but forgot to put it into the deck. I'll have to see what the next set of stuff is. Now the big combo here obviously is if he, for some reason, lets me do Devilish Valet Krenko. Okay, that's actually kind of good. This is actually kind of a good position. If we pull another land, we can do some really wild shit. We didn't, but that's okay. We're going to do some less wild shit. we pulled another land, it would have been done craving of Yohongo, and been able to swing in for 8, which would have been real cool. But we don't got 8. So, we don't got that. 
Okay. 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 Um. Okay. I need to think for one second here. He's got two untapped and one card in hand. There are plenty of two blacks, but is there a reason to hold it until I can get the Cranko trigger? Not really. Playing my land does not count as a trigger, and I don't have any hard draw, so... I do this, then I'll be committing... I'll be giving Cranko three, which is three doubles on Devilish. Double one, double two... We want a first strike. I think it's better to hold, right? I think it's better to do this. Yeah, okay. That'll be at least a little bit of a problem for it. So he can have fun trying to figure out how he wants to block that. Up yours, Vito. We'll do some more games. Let's see what... We'll see how many more... Doesn't look like people have assembled for Vigima games. How long have we been going? 26 minutes? We'll play, we'll play like... I need to start setting a timer for these streams, but honestly, this is basically a gorilla, right? This whole week is just gorillas. I'm probably just pronouncing that word. Dragon. Ooh, Jan Jensen, Chaos Crafter. I have not played against this deck too much, actually. I know it's... It's, it's an artifact combo deck, I'm assuming, usually, right? Uh, this is a terrible opening hand. That's technically better. I don't like it. I'll keep, though. We got three land. We got Banefire. We got Devilish Valet. This is so slow. This is such a slow opening. Okay. Decline. Enters tapped. Probably, that was actually probably the wrong choice. We got Rebuke and Banefire. We also got Lightning Bolt. Okay, so he's ramping. Lovely. He plays Jen, I guess we'll just thundering rebuke it. Oh, this is instant. this is sorcery speed. Why did I put this in this deck? This is terrible. This is a terrible card. For morons. Like myself. Or do I damage at sorcery speed? Okay. If anybody wants to copy this deck, don't play Thundering Rebuke. I'm an idiot. Lightning bolt this and see what it's going to do. Would he exile a mountain? Um. I like you, but you're not super great yet. Let's do that. I don't really want to have to spend another spell to deal with this, but... Deals four damage to target creature. Okay, it's better to just... Mm, let's actually do this. We'd obviously prefer to actually pull a creature much earlier, and you know, have one drops and two drops. Most of the deck has a billion of these. Ooh, is this Squee? Man, they did my boy dirty. What did he get? Old Span Dragon? Chandra might have been good in this deck. I don't think I have this card, though.
Might as well just swing with two and commit to the kill. Oh, they're dig so okay. So they're digging for cards. Why are they digging for? Car they're missing all their land drops. That's why. They could just play. I don't know. Couldn't they commit to this though? Maybe. Th okay. This person's playing smart. They're saying, okay, I'm playing a mono red burn deck. That means they have burn spells. I'm not going to play Jansen until I can protect him. Or at least until I can do something useful with him. So they're looking for a window to play. They're, they're digging to try to find more lands or more artifacts to build some form of board state so that by the time I have to commit to wiping Jansen, it actually won't wipe them out. I'm not sure that's the right call, if I'm honest. I don't know. They don't know my deck, though. They don't know that I have zero gas past turn four, basically. That, or they're looking for combo pieces to set up, and I've wildly misjudged this deck. I think they need one more turn before they can start using Cave of the Frost Dragon. Yeah, they need one more land to actually break out Cave of the Frost Dragon as an actual body threat. Which it will do pretty effectively because Thundering Rebuke is sorcery speed because I'm a moron. We'll have to see what the rest of these are. I should stop hitting the water bottle next to the mic. I have so much to learn about trying to be a streamer. I do like the new noise gates though. I think those are an improvement over the general just background hissing that you used to get to hear in my stream. It sounds like there's some sort of perpetual gas leak where it inches from my face. Um, there's no point in playing Hobgoblin Captain before going to combat, so we're going to combat. Oh, there was. It was to buff Devilish Captain. I should have pumped with Ember. Would that have worked? No, nah, it's a four. That's a commitment of four. We'll see. Uh, maybe this person just went to go do something else. Also possible. Because I, 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 I refuse to believe that I'm being unironically, like, timered by for playing a mono-red aggro deck. I think I might. They, I think they actually are doing that. All right. Probably Goblin Captain. Probably might have... Mm, I don't know. They have two white sources. They can board wipe. I won't get a huge amount out of it, unfortunately. If they do actually commit to the board wipe, I'll probably play Chandra and put an emblem on them to start the countdown. I don't know that this deck runs too much life gain. You guys seen the new Pokemon trailer? It's definitely interesting. So far it seems to have mostly produced cursed meters. But consideration of those cursed memes will have to wait because we're gonna just queue for another game. You know what I would love? I don't even want somebody to, like, edit my videos because that's asking too much people's time. But if anybody watches this and you like my stuff and you want to help me out, here's what you can do. Comment timestamps in the comments just for introduction and then when each game starts. That would be very cool of you. Also, why go Shinty? Why? Um, how do I want to do this? Probably Mountain, Favorite Champion. Into 
Azul's Fury. We'll have to see what his one drop is. Yeah, okay. Uh, actually, I don't have to do that anymore to hit my curve. Instead, I can do this. Not gonna blitz, we're just gonna keep up the, keep up the pace. Turn three, Ambergus Citadel Agent. Might have to break out Hammerhand this turn. Split the damage. Do I want to commit the damage? I want to commit the damage. I made a mistake. I don't top deck a land. I may have just screwed myself in this matchup. Does damage to any target. I hate shrines so much. We're gonna hold Kamano for one turn because, you know, it's gonna be kind of obvious why in just a second. We'll hold Kamano for one turn so that we can hit a shrine. But then I don't actually know what I do to try to win this matchup. Oh, good. You're such a cool, fun person. I love playing against shrine decks. Maybe that's the other reason that red just has a miserable time, is that it is one of the... Let's do this. Red has, I feel like, the least removal for, like, non... Least removal for anything, really, right? The only way you can remove stuff is by burning it down. And maybe you have some artifact removal, but enchantment removal? Absolutely not. How dare you attempt to remove enchantments in, uh, in my beautiful, perfect deck. Um, I'm actually going to do this. Mostly because 5 puts him out of range of just being bursted down instantly with Honden, so he's going to have to commit something else. here. Which one's the least terrible? Probably this. Ah, uh, this game's just over. Who am I kidding? There's no out. I should add the Chaos Royal to this deck. Cool, yo. Got five, six, and eight, nine, ten. That's lethal. That's game. Early, dude. 
Got a rub in insult to injury. You know, that's any target. been a good game already if you hadn't, you know, missed lethal. Okay, now you're just being a dick. No, I'm not saying good game back to you. don't deserve it. Those are the worst games. Sometimes it's like, all right, maybe they just missed lethal, right? And I'm just being unreasonably salty. No, that person was just being a dick. Oh man, this is gonna be an interesting one. We have a two drop, we have a three drop, we have no one drop. Come on, give me a one drop. Seriously, game? We have one drop, we have two drop, we have three drop, and four drop. Yeah, sure, we'll try it. Does it make sense to play this on turn one? It literally cannot do anything. No, it doesn't. Because. Maybe he'll play. If he plays Esper Sentinel in turn one. Because it's an auto include in white. We'll see. We'll see if I'll be defeated by the mighty polio. I'm gonna hold this though, just because since we're playing against white, there's always a chance it does have some sort of value one drop that we can wipe. And also, if we play this on turn two, it means when we play Ambergris on turn three, we can actually get a buff out of it. Okay. So he doesn't, so we're gonna play this now, so we have more bodies, come turn three. Or, sorry, come four. Um, given that this is the blue-white control, so let's see if this gets countered. It doesn't. Alright, let's go for body. Line. This is probably a control list, so I think playing Chandra is actually my actual out. Which means we need to wait three turns and not use Embergus to discard. I might... I might specialize it, though. Let's see. What's specializing into red do? Uh, slightly better stat line for three, and I would have to give up a land. No, I'd have to give up a red card, which right now would be Sweltering Suns. I may as well commit to it. It'll probably be returned to hand right now. But we might as well just go for go for broke here. I'm assuming we're going to see Insubstantiate, or some equivalent. Tap our creature, going to tap Ambergus, that's fine. We'll go for face again. Okay, so this person has correctly identified my deck, and is making the appropriate counterplay, which is to say, stall for time, but I guess they didn't draw any white lines. That's kind of a bummer for them. Ooh, somebody I know is playing Inscription. That's a really fun card game. I liked Inscription. Inscription was fantastic. 
The ending's a little lackluster, though. I think that probably constitutes a spoiler. Okay, so we're gonna play for one more good game, one more win, and then I will call it a day, I think. Ooh, Yagmoth. Versus the very descriptive player 9538. Um, I'm gonna keep this just because I've been wanting to try out Traumatic Prank. And this seems like a good game to play it in. Um, Shatter Skull Smashing. Climb. Falcon Earth Performer is probably one of the weaker cards in this deck. I could probably swap that out for something better, but... I don't want to. So I so I won't. Because I'm just incredibly incredible like that. I should have played past the Torch first. Eh, maybe not. I want to use this on Yawgmoth and see how they react. I think feel like that'd be fun. Um, Scarves a card at random, huh? Roll them dice. Now that actually might be a good target for Traumatic Prank. Actually, neither of those can block. Well, Jadar can block, but I really doubt he's going to block with it. I say he. I should say they. It's what I, I need to work on that. likely see Dogmoth come out this turn, and then we're going to borrow Dogmoth real quick, you know? It's a social experiment. Just a prank bro. Dogmoth is dead. No, he's, he's right here. He's fine. I'll be honest, I legit don't understand the lore of Phyrexia. Not in like an abstract sense, but in like a... Is like... Did Karn create Phyrexia? Or is that new Phyrexia? Or did Yogmoth do it? What was the Brothers War? I don't understand it, and I also don't really care if I'm being completely honest. Like... I just don't really give a shit. Is he setting up to board wipe? That would make the most sense. Okay, present champion. six more damage. One, two, three, four. I think it makes the most sense to... Oh, I'm an idiot! I forgot that was in my hand from Cardum. Okay. <sighs> That's me being very foolish right there. Oh man, what time is it? 845? Got an article I got it right after this. Blood on the snow? No, Cavalier of Night. Um Interesting. I might borrow that. Is there a way I can make this really useless or obnoxious for him?
Not to the extent that I would like. I think I might have missed lethal when I didn't. Let's try this. So the thing is, he can always sack it with Phyrexian Tower in response. That would be the smart thing to do. No, interesting. He's going to let me hit him with it. Yeah, so I missed lethal. Because this would have been... Yeah, I'm dumb. So when I missed that lightning bolt, I actually missed lethal. I feel quite silly about that. If I pull two more, there's a chance for a comeback. If I can minimize the amount of times he can hit me with Cavalier of Night before I can drop Inferno of the Star Mount. But without that, I would say we're in a pretty bad spot here. Not much point in blowing that fire. Uh... What? Dude, just hit me with it for four life first. All right, I'm doing... I'm doing one more. That was not that was not a good final game. That was a terrible game. We're not ending on that one. That was a pity win. Maybe that's what it was. They were like, you know what? He had the lightning bolt. He could have hit me with the lightning bolt and won. I'll give it to him. I'm a nice guy. Well, I appreciate your charity. Player 9834. I think that was the name. But but I'm not taking your uh I'm not taking your pity win. I will win the cheetah. I'm not going to win against Green Act, Green Ramp. This is. Come on! I have. Okay, there we go. One drop creatures, two drop creatures. Thank you. This is what it's all about. Do I do Battle Cry Goblin or Cargan Intimidator? Or Hobgoblin? Are these. These don't have subtypes. So, I do Cargan Intimidator, I think. downside is that now they do have seven mana on turn three, which means that if they wanted to do something like play... No. Is this elf? Is this elf tribal? Okay, we might actually have a chance here. I was kind of preparing to be hosed by the fact that... for other games. Oh, hey, it's the new... This guy. I thought this guy would get used. Oh, man. What a fantastic use of this card, too. So, he'll put the plus one, plus one at the Silverback Elder. Yep. So that next turn he can do it, get another cast, and get more stuff out. In the meantime, I'm pretty much hosed and out of cards. Um, right now we have creatures. Not much else. I'll do Agni. I think that one turn... I don't know, Silverback Elder is such a good card to stable. Uh, oh dear. Well, that might be game. You know? I just have a hunch. I'm 
not even gonna. Can't be mad about that one, I just got thrashed. Plus one, plus one on somebody. Does this have trample? It doesn't. Sometimes that's just how the cookie crumbles. Alright, so hopefully this is not going to set a precedent for the next several games we're playing, because I did say I was going to play until I win one. We have one drops, we have two drops, we have small amounts of control, we have a late game bomb off the pit. This version of Tyvar Kel. It looks cool. Um, I don't have a two drop. Yeah, I think this is right. Yes, it is. I should have added that, um, I don't know who I should have put in this deck. I think he'll block here.
that's bad though. Your command with command zone. Yes. It's the graveyard. This up at the end of this turn, right? I can't do anything if I do Dollhouse of Horrors. So let's make another attempt. Nope. Oh. Guess we just have to let it burn. That's pretty bad. Uh, do I have a out? I don't think I do. So we might as well play some life and dig for stuff. Yeah, there's definitely no out. I'm gonna punch her in the face one more time to see if I can. This is a funky card. I wonder why it doesn't get. I guess it's only if, if it's not pirate. No, well, that's why it's a six drop. I was like, this seems like a cool card. Oh well. All right, four games. I'm sure it won't go down. Though. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, we're on the play. I don't understand why the matchmaker thinks that I should be playing against these decks, though. Um, rabbit battery, because we can strap it to the cobalt on turn two for equipment damage. the rich, aka I'm going to just take your deck now. Here's a red card I like. Oh, that was a land though. That kind of bites. Um, what do I do for turn three? Do I just commit everything to a really stupid trade in the hope that it plays off, pays off? No, I do the boring thing. There's no counter spells. So spend one, requeue this to Cobalt War Color. And for five. Seriously?
What board wipes does this list have access to? I think most of them are slotted in... Okay, one top. Um... I think I just have to keep going for a face, regardless of what I would like to actually be doing. Uh, three damage divided among one. So I've got three, three on board, three and one is four. I need three more damage to finish this. I don't have access to yet. Interesting choice. I'm going to discard this. Um, do I do Craving of Yohongo? Yeah, I think I just put this on Fever and Champion. And we hope that he doesn't have enough combat tricks to tank this out for... No, he should be. This should be game. stuff on Twitter as I'm doing this as well. I can't believe it's only Wednesday. What did we get? Oh, I think I already had this, sadly. Kind of a neat card, though. Alright, so that is gonna be the game playing part of this stream, but a tier list. I'm going to be honest, I came into this being hard prepared to put Cardam at C tier. I guess the reason is that Cardam doesn't actually, like, as you saw in those games, his ability is not actually super relevant. He doesn't really offer too much as a red commander outside of giving you Here's the problem, right? In theory, he offers extra card advantage as a red deck right as you hit the point where you're just about to sort of start stalling out, right? The issue with that is that that assumes that he didn't get removed by being exiled or just enchanted with something that makes him a 1-1. He has to actually die. The deck list itself did a lot better than I was expecting, though, especially since we were going up against much higher tier command. Particularly fair... So, where do you get to go, Cardum? Alright, so, I was planning to put Cardum in C tier, but Cardum does have one thing going for him, which is that, that a lot of the C tier commanders don't, which is that he actually comes in swinging. Outside of that, the fact that he's monocolor, not tribal, nothing else, is not enough to put him anywhere else. So, Cardum... Congratulations, your actual gameplay value matches we've done has promoted you to the mildly uninteresting E tier. Now sit next to your friend Raphael, who I think is much more fun to actually play and do. That is going to be all for today. I'm going to pause the stream. Um, as always, if you like my stuff, please subscribe. If you don't like my stuff or can think of ways that could be better, please let me know in the comments. Same thing if there's a deck you'd like to see me make, or a creature you'd like to see me build around. I'm mostly just area this game right now. No recommendations or suggestions for those will exist. Also, I have videos for a bunch of other stuff. If you like this, you can go watch those as well. But that's all I've got, so until next time, take care, and I will see you.